My name's Dean Samid. I'm a digital artist from Ramsgate. I'm a horror specialist and I work in the book cover publishing industry. At the moment, uh, with a team of six artists worldwide, we're running a YouTube channel which promotes our stock photography and digital arts resource stocks. So that's what's keeping me busy at the moment. I'm based in Margate and I am mainly a musician um, under the name Babby. And I also help run an art studio um, called Fire Island. And I also teach at a university on a games course. I think my main anchor has always been music, which is good that I've come back around to that now. Um, but because of that, I got into doing like artwork for my music and music videos and graphic design and all those kinds of things. And that took me on a path of making music videos and doing design and visual branding for lots of other people and lots of other musicians and brands and all sorts of things. Um, but now I have come full circle and I moved back to Thanet about five years ago and decided to start a family business with my dad. Um, with a making the art studio and photography studio, which is how I actually know Dean. Um, so yeah, do you want to tell us about your journey? <laughs> yeah, sure thing. Well, I started really young, at about 14 years old. I got a, a PC computer because I got a compensation payout and um, an injury payout. And I basically started doing event flyers for local musicians and underground drum and bass nights. And the people that I started working for when I was young, their events got progressively bigger until they became uh, some of the biggest promoters in Southeast England with 2,000 plus people events. I started working for international clients for a lot of record labels in drum and bass and the darker side of drum and bass. And then after that, I got into publishing because I was often chastised my work being too aggressive or dark. I realised that a better audience for me and my work would be in the horror publishing industry. And that led on to my journey to become a professional stock photographer, creating assets for other digital artists. And that brings us up to today, where I'm now a pro YouTuber, creating free educational content and pitching and selling the products that we create in-house. So that's, um, yeah, a whistle-stop tour of my weird career. So I was self-taught and I really underachieved at school and college. I, I think I was way too wacky um, when I was a teenager. But in my mid-twenties, I went to Canterbury Christchurch University, the Broadstairs campus led by Alan Meads. And I attained a first class degree in digital media. And I'm a little nerd fact, so I, I was the highest attaining student in the history of the course with my grade average, which I was quite happy about because when I went into university, because I was so rubbish at school, I didn't think I'd do well, but I did in the end. So I was quite happy about that. Um, when I was young, I, I lived in poverty. So everything was difficult. Um, just day to day living was difficult, but getting the PC was a, a real big opportunity and I, I had the hardware and the software to really get into things because I was always interested in digital arts. Even when I was um, very young, like 10, 11 years old, um, when I was 11, I was in hospital and I managed to have a go on an old RM Nimbus PC that had Microsoft Paint on it. And I was, uh, I was captivated with the technology. So, yeah, my, my interest was always there, but I never had the resources to get the equipment that I needed. But um, yeah, I had a compensation payout um, that I was due to get when I was 18. But we appealed to the judge and asked that, like, this, this guy, this kid's got a real interest in this technology. Can we get some early? So when I was 14, I got a PC computer and that, that gave me the springboard, really. And then, um, yeah, after that, I just hustled and freelanced my way to get all the additional equipment and stuff I need. And because of the internet, there's no barrier to entry. It is very democratized. So there aren't really any explicit barriers to entry. Once you have the entry level hardware and software, it, it's all down to you, your own efforts. So there aren't serious gatekeepers, as it were. I relate to that, like non gatekeepy, like it's my, works of the music thing as well. There's no stopping you as long as you can just like you put the, the grit in and the power in. 
it's like yeah there is like a true sense of democracy on the internet you can definitely get your foot in the door really easily there's a, um a lot of my friends are in the music scene of course and i you as well daisy you're involved in music and i i think after a certain point because the technology's de- democratized the playing field so evenly now you can achieve a great deal with a youtube channel with a soundcloud account like the only as as before it was gatekeepers that said no you're not the right face you're not the right sound but now you can build an audience off your own back and prove to people to record labels to publishers with the sheer numbers that you have it's like there is an audience there I guess it is a bit hard, a bit harder though, because it's like way more saturated. There's like a lot more people doing these things. But I guess like the the lesson to be learned, I think, is that you just got to keep doing it and over and over and over and over and over again until it eventually like works. And just like don't stop and don't stop like perfecting your craft because I think a lot of people like give up, don't they? You can only lose if you stop. And I'm yeah. from the school of thought that just keep smashing it with a club hammer until it works. <laughs> yeah. It's not pretty, it's quite ugly, but, you know, you just got to keep whacking it with that club hammer. And in the end, something's going to come together. <laughs> I agree with that sentiment. <laughs> I had quite a different experience um, with education to Dean, by the sounds of it. Um, I don't know. I didn't really get on with school that much. I was like kind of like an overachiever, but I wasn't rewarded very much because I was a bit weird. <laughs> um, so yeah, I struggled with that like at secondary school and stuff. But um, then I went to music school and that kind of changed a lot of things for me um, and it made my have a lot more confidence and all those kinds of things. Um, but yeah, I think... And also I went to university as well, but I didn't learn like any practical skills really. It was more about like kind of concept and kind of fine art and stuff like that. Um, but it just gave me like three years to just like have the time to concentrate on being creative rather than having to like work a, a day job constantly. Um, so that was really good. Um, but yeah, in terms of challenges I've had, it's just like it's been a long time coming for me I think with music I've been doing it for a really long time and it just like I've always stuck with it even though I've had my little side hustles like all the time but it hasn't always brought like a massive amount of like instant gratification um and I think I'm just kind of referring back to what like Dean was saying about just like kind of hammering at home with a sledgehammer (laughs) um but yeah it just like it's I just stuck with it and now it's like I'm doing the thing that I really want to do because I really struggled I think as well when I worked as like a graphic designer and making videos for other people that I really struggled that I didn't have time to make the things I wanted to for myself may I ask how would you quantify success in the music scene outside (laughs) of monetary gain what would you quantify it as success or feedback that that will inspire you and get you moving forward and think yeah we got something here any any ideas on that I wouldn't say it's about money at all I think like I feel successful now because I am able to spend my time doing something that I'm really passionate about um and just like that's something that's like personal to me um and I've like I kind of reached that moment where I just like I get to live my life on my own terms, I guess. Um, which I think it amounts to I think that's what kind of being successful is in some ways. And just but yeah, just being able to just do your thing, you know. I always say on my courses and in my lectures that time is the most valuable commodity that exists. And if you have agency and sovereignty over your own time then you're one of the wealthiest people in the world. There are some, yeah, for sure. so many high income earners that are ground into the uh, floor be- because of their responsibilities and they don't get home to spend time with their kids. They have to commute for six hours a day. So on paper, they're earning very high incomes, very high wages, but they're time poor. And yeah. I believe that if you have the time to invest in your creative pursuits, the stuff that you really feel like you're meant to be doing then you're one of the wealthiest people on planet Earth. Yes. <laughs> That's, you got some good words coming out of your mouth. <laughs> yep. I have a team of people around me. Um, so, 
Yeah, I do look at numbers, but it's more like a kind of a dopamine hit and it's a bit addictive sometimes. It's really annoying. Yeah. Um, so I try and ignore it. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's more like I would be lying if I said I wasn't looking at the numbers, but I wouldn't say that the numbers really amounts to success either because there's some people's art like I think streaming is like a bad thing as well sometimes because yep. like the amount of numbers doesn't equate to like how good the art is it's just like how many times one person can listen to it like maybe something someone made something really beautiful and really challenging and like maybe something that you like like choose to experience like a couple of times but it doesn't mean it's any less than like the number one song in the charts is just Absolutely, a different experience. Absolutely, because it's all subjective, isn't it? And in digital marketing, they have a phrase called vanity metrics, where on the surface level, the metrics look good and they make you feel good, but they don't always transfer into the results that you need. Uh, yeah. From the perspective of the art, uh, musician, that might be unit sales, that may be bookings. So you, you could have X amount of thousand likes on a piece, but has it resulted in the results that you actually need to progress as as a musician yeah it depends where you want to be as well like anywhere in in the art world or just in general like I I don't think like numbers equate to like something that could be considered a masterpiece it's just like it's just metrics it's like yeah I don't think I think this is a really important thing to talk about as well with young people because I think they worry about numbers quite a lot but it's hard not to in this and strange not only that with uh, a lot of young people um looking at these numbers uh, the number one uh, career choice for young people now it used to be astronauts but the number one career choice for young people now is um a youtube star that's yeah. the, the, or the, the, an influencer or something yeah, like youtube that. star or influencer but like you was just saying before you have to be wary of comparing yourself to other people and and they're at a certain stage in their career and a young person starting off but they say comparison is the thief of joy and it's really true me starting a youtube channel um i try not to look at the analytics i try not to look at the numbers we run as a business and we have to do it but not on a daily basis um and there are other channels that are doing better than us there are a lot of other channels doing not so good as us but comparison is a thief thief of joy if you go down that rabbit hole you'll be obsessing about everyone else and not working on yourself what i'd say to all young people watching this today is produce and create artwork it doesn't matter what it is you could be a a jungle mc you could be a ceramics painter you could be um, an artisan you can make stuff for etsy the only thing that matters in this new economy right now is products and work and portfolio College is good, school is good, university is good. It will build up your skill set for completing things and getting things done on time and to a certain requirement. But at the end of the day, in the creative industries, the number one thing that counts is your portfolio. I commission artists across the world on a monthly basis um, in all kinds of areas, in 3D design, in photography, in illustration, I've never once asked to look at their degree. I've never once asked to look at their college certificate. The number one thing that I look at right at the beginning is their portfolio and a history of work. If you are 14 to 22, you're just getting yourself going. Um, You don't need a history of work, but you need to demonstrate that you are producing on a regular basis. And it doesn't matter about the quality of the work. All that matters at that age group is volume. You need to produce lots and you need to share it publicly with the world. Now, if you're an introverted type and you're a little bit shy, absolutely nothing wrong with that. But do try and come out of your shell a little bit and post the work publicly because that will give you a feedback loop to let you know where to iterate and improve and find the audience for your work there is an audience for your work out there you just need to connect with them and the only way that you can do that is by releasing your work public publicly and on a frequent basis 
I think what my thing that I would say is just to keep doing things just like don't stop doing stuff like that you're passionate about and like don't worry about it too much just keep doing things and and eventually it will lead to opportunities and it will lead to things that make sense and it will work itself out like you just gotta like trust that if you continue doing the things that you're passionate about that you will eventually end up in the right place Absolutely. And one thing I'll say is, even though the economy and the world is pretty crazy right now, the new economy uh, that is being a digital freelancer or a digital product creator is in a boom state. So there are wild opportunities globally. You can collect, you can connect with your audience and create a full time, either a freelance career or a self-employed career, you could sell products on Etsy, you could sell music sample packs, you could sell stock photography, you could sell little um, sound stabs on places like Audio Jungle. There are so many opportunities. You could sell T-shirt designs on Redbubble. The world's your oyster. There's so much there for the taking, but I'm not going to lie, it's difficult because there's lots of other people that have the same idea that want to work from home. But to rise above that noise and just be a little bit better than everyone else, it is attainable. It's the kind of thing that you can attain within 24 months with the right amount of drive. I feel like throughout history, people have always said, like, it's, like, difficult. There's a lot of people out there wanting to do the same things. Like, even pre-internet, like, if you wanted to be, like, a musician, people would be like, well, there's a lot of people out there wanting to do the same thing. But the thing is, right is that some of those people will give up eventually. And this is about like yeah. not giving up, I think. Isn't it really interesting how like, even though you are in a creative like industry for a really long time, like there's still like new things to learn all the time and still things that you don't know. <laughs> like you never stop learning, I think. And I think some people think that like, people become like a, a master all of a sudden, yeah. but it's like, you never stop learning. There's never like new, like their stuff to, not know about <laughs> we have we have a young algerian guy on our team on our video team and he's 22 years old i've been using photoshop longer than he's been alive and he is wiping the absolute floor with a lot of us he's, <laughs> he's using the software in ways that we didn't even believe possible he's one of our most um successful content creators and and he's so young and, he, and he's just approaching it from such a different angle and we're blown away. So on, in regards to learning, I'm by no means the ultimate master. I'm a student like everyone else. Rit, rit, yeah. Even more so now with these pesky kids coming through. It's <laughs> too good. <laughs> it's the kids that are the threats. They should be oh. talking to us. <laughs> <laughs>